The Chiefs pushed through a tough week, went out on a road trip, and got a win. We'll see who came to play and who still needs to step up as we look through the film room coming at you right now. So much to talk about. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, so much going on for this team to get hit like they did last week. What we saw in Oakland was probably a very, very underestimated resiliency from a team that had to deal with such a distraction so late in the week. Uh, especially when you're coming off the bye and you're getting ready for what's going to be your stretch run. So we're going to talk about that today as well as the pluses and minuses. We're going to look at a bunch of film. But I want to start... Talking about Patrick Mahomes, um, another four touchdown performance, another big day out to the point where, and I'm guilty of this as anyone else is, uh, if you've heard on the podcast, four touchdowns and I feel like he had an off day. It's to that point and that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, looks like he's going to smash and even double my preseason prediction for him. I think I had him at 26, 27 touchdowns, so uh, that's out the window at this point. Um, but what we saw him do is is get those touchdowns. He got some great play from his tight end. We're going to talk about him in a bit as well as all the guys who took over for the, the hole left at running back. That'll be later in the show. To start with, uh, I thought Pat Mahomes showed some leadership. Uh, looks like he called, although he won't admit it, uh, a players-only meeting. After the whole Kareem Hunt thing, they're getting ready to get on an airplane and, and get out to Oakland. Uh, showed a level of maturity that I didn't think he was going to have to pull off this season, but it's good to see him do. Um, kind of circled the wagons. The team came out, I felt, pretty much flat across the board. Uh, even the guy who ended up being the best player of the game, Travis Kelsey, had that fumble on the first play. It just looked a little bit out of sync. They looked sluggish, and I think I said that in the post game live. Uh, if you missed that, go back and check that out. It should be posted now. Uh, what we have to concentrate on is even though there were a number of underthrows, uh, one that was really pretty suspect, uh, as well as a number of overthrows, uh, Mahomes just wasn't very sharp on the day yet. Again, almost 300 yards, four touchdowns, making plays with his feet, uh, getting the ball to the playmakers. Uh, that is what you can only dream of. For a team that is off base, off kilter, and still be able to put that kind of stuff up from your all but rookie quarterback. So uh, rejoice in that. I think Travis Kelsey had a bounce back game, and that helped quite a bit. Uh, nothing to take away from, from Mahomes, but uh, Kelsey, despite especially that first play, uh, had a day out where, where he was trying, I think, to get even. Uh, always an interesting matchup against the Raiders. You never know who's going to be the most intense, but Travis Kelsey was definitely the one that I feel like, and it's probably partially due to his play against the Rams. He had a couple of drops in that game and just generally looked lackluster against the Rams on a primetime game, big time stage, and Travis Kelsey didn't quite play up to his prospects. Uh, he came back against Oakland. I, th I thought he really made up for it, and that was clearly his goal. And I think he pulled it off. It helps his young quarterback as well as a couple of the other guys, but let's take a look at one play in particular that I think really sets Travis Kelsey apart. Kelsey's going to start out wide and run a route that we see wide receivers run quite a bit. Just a little pivot to the inside and back out. Simple, nice catch, reaches for the end zone. Now that's something that you just don't see every day. And it's one thing to say he's one of the better tight ends in the league, and, and that's absolutely true, but this is something that you don't see from other tight ends in this league. You don't see it from Rob Gronkowski. Uh, you might have seen it from Olsen once in a while, but you don't see it from Jimmy Graham. This is unique. This is something that has to be celebrated in the fact that he was able to bounce back from what was a poor game and put this kind of performance out on this field, I think that was a big takeaway that's in the positive side for this team. And they're going to have to rely on it going forward for a couple of reasons. We're going to talk about the running backs here in a little bit, but I want to say thank you to all of you who have been continually checking out these videos. The site's doing great, and I thank you. It's all because of you. Um, and if you're new here, consider giving us a little check mark. Give us a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Um, and hit that subscription and the notification bar so you know when I put up a new video. 
That said, there are some deficiencies, and we have to talk about this defense because right now, going into the stretch, uh, there's one big concern, but we have to see what we saw that day uh, last week against the Raiders that's really important, especially coming uh, in the next couple of games, both against these Baltimore Ravens that we're going to talk about uh, the game plan for on Friday. Make sure you check out for that, as well as the coming Seahawks game, both of whom are running teams. And what we saw was just a lackluster, uh, honestly, a poor effort from both of the starting linebackers for this Chiefs team. Both Reggie Ragland, a guy that I have touted for quite a long time, and I'm not about to get off that train, um, but as well as Anthony Hitchens. And what we saw was play that doesn't measure up to what you have to do if you really want to stop the run. And these are two teams coming, the Ravens and the Seahawks, that are going to exploit you against the run because they really don't have as big an arsenal. It's not like the Rams, where the Rams chose not to run the ball because they can do so much in the pass game. Uh, you still have Wilson in Seattle, but the receiving core isn't what it used to be. Uh, these teams have to rely on the run, and they have the rookie quarterback in Baltimore. So uh, more on that later, but what you have to do as a team is get after that run, and we didn't see that. In fact, let's take a look at what we did see. This first angle, we're going to look at Reggie Ragland, who's going to take a couple of steps and basically stop. He's reading, not trying to attack. He falls off of this block and eventually ends up making it, but seven yards down the field. Now, when we flip over to the other view, Hitchens does something similar. He takes two steps towards the hole, and rather than attacking to fill, he allows the guard to come to him, bowls him out of there. And this is what allows the back to get through and have Ragland come clean it up. Now, that performance doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially when you look at what these guys are capable of. And we'll get to that in a second. But when people hear me say that they're not being aggressive enough, that they're not being instinctual enough, this is what it ought to look like. Let's take a look at another linebacker who plays the way you need to. Let's look at Luke Keekley, who is going to be aggressive and tack the gap as he sees it. He comes downhill and actually gets in front of the guard trying to reach him. He dips his shoulder a little bit in order to get underneath, but he does make the tackle and prevent a gain. Now, I don't know if it's simple player lack of intensity or if it's being coached out of them or if there are other criteria to their reads that I'm not getting. It should be more straightforward, especially when you have a big front in front of you. And you can see them perform with aggression from time to time. It's just not often enough. It's not consistent enough, especially on running downs. But every now and then, they do do something like this. Here's a look at Hitchens, who's looking at a zone-type block, not a guard coming at him. And when he realizes it, he is able to step up and attack that gap. This is what he should be doing all the time as he sees it and shoots. The likelihood is they may have to do that quite a bit. Maybe not all day, but quite a bit against the Ravens. Now, if the one exception is going to be if Patrick Mahomes and the offense comes out on all cylinders and they get up, they're going to be in a position to play a little bit of a nickel. And what we've seen is a lot of variation against the Raiders. Uh, Neiman got snaps. O'Daniel got snaps. Obviously, Raglan and Hitchens did. A lot of combinations in there at linebacker. Sorensen came in in the nickel as well. Let's take a look at what the little nickel did and how it's set up to be uh, something that they can go to when they need to. Now, this is going to be Sorensen and O'Daniel in the middle of a straight cover two. He's going to be able to get some depth, be in position to come up and attack the ball carrier once he has the ball. It ends up going for a first down, but this is a base defense they can use out of the little nickel. Now, I told you a couple of weeks ago, there is going to be times when they want to go to that little nickel purely out of coverage reasons. Unfortunately, they have to get better at it because for every good play, there was one of these and one really confounded me. And when you look at it, I don't know if it's either a bad schematic setup from Bob in which players got reversed in the roles that they should be in or whether it was just a, a misformation on the player's part, not knowing where they're supposed to be. But there was one play in particular that really stood out on the Cooks touchdown. Let's take a look at that. We're going to highlight a switch here that Dan Sorensen calls, putting Fuller behind him so that Sorensen's on a wide out and Fuller is in the safety position. Unfortunately, neither of them are equipped to handle these particular roles, and neither is Hitchens, who bites early and lets Cook go past him without Fuller being in position behind him. That leads to the score. At the end of the day, defense comes down to, for a coordinator, playing your guys in roles that they're capable of executing your game plan very important because 
fitting square pegs into round holes makes for big plays for the opposing offense. And on the other side, the players have to play with aggression. They have to play at a level that is commensurate with them being on a professional football team. And sometimes that just doesn't look to be the case. So can you play blame everywhere? Yeah, you probably can. They have to get this together because down this stretch run, there's a couple of running games that are going to be important coming against them, but they have to get ready for that playoff run. And this is going to be important. You can't outscore everyone with consistency. So if the Chiefs can continue to get a little bit better, and giving up yardage is something that they're comfortable with. They're going to be in a position where they can keep teams 28 and under. There should be no team that they can't run that score up on and get wins consistently in the postseason. Now, on the opposite side, with all the hubbub about Kareem Hunt, a couple of guys stood up in his place. I have to give a lot of credit to Spencer Ware for stepping in on a week where, because the, it was so late in the week when they found out about the Hunt situation and that he was going to be gone, uh, Spare, I'm sorry, Spencer Ware and Damian Williams didn't get a whole lot of snaps in practice. And that said, I think you saw Spencer Ware not quite as effective as he has been in relief of Hunt so far this season. Uh, but just a little bit rustier, a little bit more with the focus on him. I think that's going to improve this coming week. He did a couple of nice things, had some solid runs most of the day. But one thing that sets him apart is a great play that they ran out of him running the Wildcat. Let's look at that. Here Mahomes is going to shift to Spencer as the QB position. And the trifecta backfield, I'm going to call it. Mahomes fakes going up, and it's a direct snap. Fakes the handoff and plunges. He does make it in. Very nice play by Spencer Ware. The interesting thing about that is that Daryl Williams is, is now the, the third backup, uh, even with the Sharkandrick West signing. And he also is, has the ability to run the Wildcats. So it's a wrinkle that I think Andy's going to have at his disposal as the season goes on. And it's going to be there for the taking. We'll see how they implement it going forward or if they kind of take a break until the playoffs. But I think it's definitely something you're going to see again in the postseason. Now, that brings us to probably my favorite play of this game. And that's easily because the play design is so good in understanding how to manipulate the keys that the defense is using in the front seven. Let's have a look at that. From the top angle, they motion in Kelsey, and it really shows you how flow and the effect of the misdirection changes how the defenders can react. It allows Hunt to get to the edge and get downfield. On this angle, you see Kelsey come in, and this flow is going to change between him and Tyreek Hill going one way, Spencer Ware going the other. And they actually line up, so at the pitch, the defenders can't really tell who's going to get the ball. Hill coming underneath is great. Kelsey gets turned, gets a halfway decent block, and you see Fisher coming down. If Hill had been able to get to the corner, this might have been a touchdown, but having to take that jab step to beat the defender still allows him to get 33 yards. And lastly, they got good relief from a third down back who actually got some carries, and Damian Williams did some things that you expected from him and did a couple of things that you didn't. He had a really great run that I think solidifies just exactly what he can bring to the mix as the change of pace guy. He's got more acceleration and more cutting ability than Ware. Obviously not as much power, but he can fit through creases. And he has a, an eye for getting downfield. This is a guy that I think is going to supplement whoever's running the ball as the primary. Uh, and maybe that, that may become a committee, uh, especially if Williams, uh, Daryl that is, gets more carries and gets active. It's a way to use more backs, keep them fresher, which I think is going to be important in the run game. Because the tendency is going to be for Andy to go to the pass game and kind of wash away from the run and that's going to have a bad effect going on they have to be able to maintain at least the 33 35 percent balance that they have now with the run game i think damian williams is going to play a big part of that and he showed what he could do against the raiders now before i wrap i just want to say one thing that gets taken for granted quite a bit is the fact that mitch morse came back against the raiders played the entire game and looked good doing it. Had a couple of nice power blocks, understands where he needs to be. Obviously, he was rusty, uh, but that's just like his takeoff. He understands where he's supposed to be, leverage, and that's the key to Mitch Morris's game. If he can stay healthy, that's a big cog that's going to help down the line. I expect that to come out quite a bit as they look towards these Ravens. Now, I will have the game plan video for you and be a little bit more specific about that here in a couple of days. But I want to say thank you to you all for watching. I appreciate all the time that you put in. I do have a couple of new things coming for you, including some merch that somebody asked me about the other day. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you for watching as always, and I'll talk to you next time.